I don't even know if you if you remember each other right i mean it's like i do i remember very yeah. yeah i think the last time i probably saw you was at um at um your grandmom's funeral that's, unfortunately oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what i was yeah. gonna say that was like seven years ago so I, okay so you were you were you were an adult i forgot about that yeah yeah he was I, I, honestly i i kind of remember like even years a couple years before that seeing you somewhere but um not like not really old enough to like. I have just a, lost audio on you. On me? Yeah. Oh, am I back? Yeah, I have I have full audio on everybody. It's Zoom. Gary, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I lost audio on you too. We have audio on each other. You know when you did you did a you did a uh, podcast recently, and when I was listening to it, people were just going like that. Your uh, system was messed up. Second. You're good, Jay, right? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, Barry. Give me one sec. Let me get my – it's trying to connect with my Bluetooth headphone, so. Okay. Yeah, I think the last time he was – that you kind of hung out and knew him was, like, at my 40th birthday party. <laughs> Which would have made really? you – Maybe that would have made you <laughs> – I was – 10? Uh, yeah. 20 years ago? I would have been 10 years old. Yeah. I can't it's remember. Nice, it's nice both being born on um, on years that end in zero. Yeah, yeah. The math, math, the math right. is pretty yeah. easy. Very easy. Yeah. Yo, B. So I was just saying that I was watching you on a podcast like a week or two ago. Yeah. And the the people on there, it wasn't wasn't a podcast. It was on um, Facebook Live. Yeah. And everybody kept saying that something was wrong with your audio, and the other guy was good. So I didn't, you know, I tried to tell you that, but you, you couldn't, you didn't see the messages, but I think that was might be the same problem you have right now. Um, the Bluetooth. Nah, it was my audio going out because the microphone was covered up. I think like this, I covered that up. It's hard oh. to hear me. Yeah. Yeah. How's the shot? Do I need to bring my thing up or down or? I can only see half of that bald head of yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! There my, it is. Yeah. Now we got the shine on it. Everything. We don't want to cut that off, man. Yeah. That's that's my secret weapon. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So that's that's cool. Barry. Um, that's Barry's home studio over there. That's nice. Yeah. Cool. No, he got it. He got it hooked, man. 
Better so than we thought. Did you cover than anything beforehand? Like any any things you want to discuss? Um, no, I mean, I think you, thank you very much for sending the, the kind of the questions. That really helps prompt us. Um, you know, because it's so much different than what we normally do with the athletes. So yeah, um, we can just you know, and the the intro I'll do separately. Like I'll pre-record okay. the intro, so it'll be there, so we don't have to do anything. So we can just start talking right now, and then Jordan will do well. Jordan's computers are broke, so I'll probably do the editing. <laughs> yeah, um, and we'll just edit out what we don't, you know, the beginning of this stuff, and then we'll just go into the meat and potatoes. Okay. Now Zoom is voice activated, right? So if I should wait till you guys like finish a question or doesn't this like switch off with Zoom or something? Um, I don't it's, know. It's pretty it's pretty good it like um i mean we're, it's not going to be a video it's going to just be the audio so i mean we, um, we, we always record the video and i throw it up on I, I throw it up on facebook i mean on 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 youtube just we have it there but yeah it, it's it's fine we'll we never really step on each other um if anything sometimes we might step on each other but not on top of you so we'll ask the question we'll give you plenty of room to speak um, okay i think yeah. zoom what zoom does it, it indicates with that little yellow box on who is speaking, but it doesn't really kind of mesh on top of each other audio wise. Cool, I wanna just get uh, my participants, hold on. How do I get this so I can see both I don't know, you're, you're breaking up. I can't, I can't understand what you're saying. Right. We're just more gallery. Who's been the host? Where are you, Barry? Arizona. Arizona. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we lost you for a second there. Yeah, no, I know. All right, cool. So let's just, everybody. That's good. Let's just get into it. Let's do it. And don't feel free like to, you know, you don't have to be anchored to those questions. Jump in, you know, yeah. when, yeah. when you're talking about something. Cool. 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 So, you know, I, I, let me start with this. So, you know, the, the thank you for coming on the podcast, number one. Number two, the Thanks. reason that we do this podcast generally is to talk to elite athletes to try to pull out from them what they do differently, what they do that's unique, um, that makes them elite athletes. And we want to be able to share that information with the younger audience who's listening to that so they can maybe emulate some of those things and become elite themselves. So having you on from a different perspective to talk about, you know, music and I mean, almost every athlete that we've ever known, especially today, walks around with, you know, um, earbuds or in, in their ears. They're listening to something. They're listening to music in some way to do something, either to motivate them or to calm them or whatever, whatever it takes. And so we thought it'd be a great idea to have someone like yourself on there who produces music for lots of reasons um, to kind of explain to us how that works. Um, so maybe just tell us a little bit about your background, how you got started um, with music, and how you got started with specifically this type of music. Did we freeze up again? I can't believe yeah, I did. It's all right. We can cut. We'll, we'll fix that. No, I'm just wondering why it's freezing. Why, 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 yeah. why it's freezing? So. Hold on one second. Let's do a restart, right? But give me give me one second, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to see if it's those headphones. I'm going to bring them upstairs or something where they're not even close to it. Okay. Oh, actually, you know what? I could just shut off Bluetooth. That's an even better idea. Yo, you don't need to ask the question again. <laughs> I'm not repeating that whole question again. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll cut that. Yeah. When he starts talking, I'll just put them together. Yeah, yeah. you'll put them together. I can okay, we should. My apologies, guys. 
Yeah. So you can, I'm not going to repeat the question. We'll just edit that. So you can just take it from there and just kind of start telling us a little about how you got started in music and then specifically how you got started in, you know, the things that you're doing now. Yeah. So the music started for me, as you know, we've known each other for years uh, at a very young age. And um, when I first started thinking about getting into music seriously, my only real goal was to be able to do music full time. And so as I honed my skills and moved into the role of producer and that came about, you know, with that came a lot of pressures in terms of uh, music as a job, as opposed to just something that I loved or something that was a hobby. And I was a producer in New York and literally timelines, deadlines, stresses, commitments, taking 100 to 200 hours to produce a four to five minute pop song and having to turn those over at a pretty regular pace. And what I noticed uh, uh, that was going on with me was I was beginning to lose my love of why I started in the first place and what I loved about music. And it just became like everybody else, a stressful job. So, uh, you know, I knew that my intention was to kind of reignite my love for music and really reconnect with, uh, with, my heart. So by random, I did a search on the internet and I typed in music and the heart. And what I came up with was, and what I saw was that music can actually target our resting state of our heart. So our heart is at a, at a relaxed state, most humans between 60 to 70 beats per minute. And so I decided that I was going to uh, set my metronome in my computer to 60 to 70 beats per minute, somewhere in that, in that range, and just allow myself to take these musical journeys, so to speak, instead of 100 to 200 hours, what would happen if I just let music come through me? You know, I didn't think anybody would be listening to this music at all. And I didn't know at the time, but what I was doing was, is called entrainment. So it's like a synchronization that occurs through music. So entrainment is when uh, an internal rhythm adapts to an external rhythm and our internal rhythm is basically our heart you know our heart is like a metronome and we have the ability to adapt to adapt to different tempos of music which not just affects us emotionally but affects us on a physical level as well so i started taking these journeys and at 60 beats per minute for an hour long i didn't think anyone was gonna listen to these pieces of music no melody you know exactly the opposite of what i was doing in pop music you know right. i was more like decomposing than composing music and uh you know when i played it back for people they were like wow this is so relaxing and during the process of it as well you know just bringing my my heart to that temple where i was synchronized with the music took me to a very very relaxed state and a similar to state to what um, athletes would call the zone or the flow, right? When you're not thinking about anything, you're kind of an autopilot and everything's clicking. Your focus is very advanced, but you're in a relaxed yet attentive state at the same time. Um, and so I began to share the music with people and it started kind of rippling out. People started giving me testimonials oh, while wow, we're using this in, uh, our dentist office when we go for procedures. I use it to deliver my uh, my children into the world. Uh, using it, I used it when my father passed in hospice. You know, I used it before surgery. I had surgeons who started to use it during surgeries. You know, to move them to that state. And so that really kind of piqued my curiosity of the science of what music can do for us and how music can move us to these beneficial states of health, not just physically, but you know, I think of health as a multi-part system, you know, which is physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual as well. You know, it, it comes down to all four parts of those to reach a state where we're in balance. Yeah. And that's where it gets exciting, you know, in talking in, in sports as well and looking to give people the edge you know, most of the time we think of music as just like an emotional or mental experience, but that's, that's truly not the case. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's awesome. That's an awesome journey right there. Um, I should may probably mention to the audience, right, that you and I have known each other since we're 
about nine or 10 years old. Um, you're one of my closest friends in the world. And I was probably there the first time you ever recorded or played your first song ever. Um, That's and some, of our, some of our good friends were backup singers on that. And um, so I, I've kind of been through the evolution with you. And um, it's interesting to see kind of where you started um, to where you are now and the amazing things that you're doing with your music um, from everything from the things you talked about to um, I, I have some stuff on my on my phone that I, I play it. You know, when I if I leave, I play it for my for my dog. You know, I leave it on for my dog because it's you've done a pet sounds thing. So it's so interesting how it there's different music and different levels and vibrations and things for you know different situations and different even you know athletes and and, and animals. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's more and more research. You know, science is kind of catching up to what we've known for thousands of years with music and sound. But there's more and more research being done that, you know, show the indications of how music can benefit in, in different things and in athletes as well. So, you know, for me, and you know this, 30 years ago, I would have laughed at myself. You know, I just want to tell all your listeners that because yeah. sometimes you have to think out of the box and that's what gives you the edge. But I would have laughed at myself, and you, you probably would have laughed at me, too. You know, if I would have said, hey, listen. Maybe did, or maybe did laugh at you. Yeah, you're still As far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, 30 years ago, my music's going to put people to sleep. You know, I would, I would consider that an insult, you know, because I was a rock musician. I was producing club, hip-hop, everything else but this. Yeah. You know, so sometimes it, um, you don't know exactly where you're going in your career path and things unfold as you become more creative, as you start to utilize tools that can move you there, you know, your path unfolds in, in a different way. And I think that happens with athletes as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so talk to us a little bit about, you know, how the music specifically, you know, works with the brain and, and can give an athlete an advantage. Yeah. So I like to look at it in, in two, two different ways, the brain and the heart, because they're uniquely different intelligences. We're learning more and more that the, the brain and the heart both have intelligences to themselves, but each one is uniquely different and they work together and they also balance. Yeah. You know, so um, a, lot of, a lot of times, and this is in normal life as well, things that prevent us from reaching peak performance is mental chatter, you know, and our own Absolutely. thoughts sometimes can become either our biggest coach or our biggest challenge, mm -hmm. you know? And I love Anthony Robbins, who, I, who I've been, you know, listening to for a long time. So we're like, we're like, our humans are like when we're going to a movie and when we see a bad movie, he compares that to waiting online to see that bad movie again and again. That's how we relive our stories, you know? So it's like going to a bad movie and then just re oh, I'm gonna watch that one more time. Yeah. We do that a lot and we beat ourselves up and we underlie our own, um, you know, our, our own successes with our mind chatter. So that's, you know, within the brain, we're usually in a, in a place where we're in a, a, a very high state of thoughts processing and we have different brainwave states. You know, the more thoughts that you have, the more active that, you, that your brain is, you're in a state that's called beta, right? As you relax, you move into a, a, a state where you're slowing that thought process down and you're slowing the brain waves down. So the more thoughts you have, the faster your brain waves. That's an easy way to think of it. The less thoughts you have, the slower your brain wave states. And it goes all the way from beta, right, which is that focused waking state that most of us are always in, to alpha, which is more relaxed and attentive. Then it goes into theta, which is even more relaxed. And a lot of times people reach that meditative state in theta. And then you move into delta, which are sleeping patterns, right? Where we're completely, we're completely slowed down. So the important part is that we can target now utilizing music and specific technologies that are used with music to target those different brainwave states. So for instance, there's a technology that's called binaural beats. And you might have you might have heard that you might not have, but um, it introduces frequencies into the left and right side of the brain that target those specific states. So I could give you an example uh, of that. So if we were targeting um, a more relaxed state 
um, at about, let's say about eight, seven to eight hertz, which is where you're in alpha, you're attentive, right? But you're, you're not um, fully relaxed. So you would introduce a brainwave uh, frequency of say 24 frequency on one side and eight in the other, right? So it, uh, it targets the difference of those two. So actually no, it was 24 and 16. It targets the difference between those two, which is eight. And your brain entrains to that. So it actually synchronizes to the average of those two. So it's complex, but the, what you really need to know, the technologies already exist out there for binaural beats that say target alpha, which is your more, more relaxed or attentive, uh, an attentive state, target your sleep states, and even target a more focused state, you know, when you're during training or you want to adapt and, and you know, be more up, more focused and more firing and wiring, you, know, you can target those brainwave states utilizing music um, that has binaural beats in them to either slow down, speed up, get better sleep. And um, there's lots of uh, companies out there that put out programs for binaural beats, but also a company that I love that I've worked with in creating compositions with binaural beats is, is a company called Monroe Institute. And they created the, tech, the, the main technology called Hemisync that really has been a leader and pioneer in that field. So I always look as, at music as a bridge. You know, where am I now? Where do I want to go? And what will take me there in terms of doing that? So that's one way, you know, to target different brainwave states is with binaural beats. There's also something called isochronic beats, monorial beats, they're similar, you know, and um, you have to really check it out and listen to them to see which one you like, you know, and which one sounds good to you because, you know, is, the composition also matters. The technology could be great, but you hate the composition, it's not gonna work. Right, so that, that, that gives me two follow-up questions. Okay. One, one is, um, you know, with, is the is the idea that you could use this, you could use these these binaural beats, this music, to kind of control or slow down your thought process um, as a training mechanism. And then the more you're doing that, the more you repeat that, you learn your brain learns to adapt to that. So that when you're in a competition, when you're in a place and you don't have music going you still have the ability to kind of train. It's like, it's like doing breathing or meditation. When you do it in practice over and over and over again, it becomes a secondary thing when you're going into competition and you're in that crucial situation and you can revert back to your breathing technique just to keep you calm and going. Is that the same kind of principle? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're targeting those same states as you would, you know, any athlete would, you know, the, the more resting state that moves you to what's called the parasympathetic state, you know, where your body can recuperate um, you can rest and digest, you know, but you're not going to be using that in a competition, you know, so right. you might want to listen to, um, you know, things that have more beta frequencies before you start or something that bridges the two. And it really teaches you how to, to adapt to stresses as well. So exactly what you, you said, once you know what that feeling is, right, when you move from like, say, beta to alpha and you start off stressed and anxious, right, and then you feel yourself coming down to a slower pattern and your, your stresses and your thought mechanisms aren't as many there, your inner thoughts, and you're in a more relaxed state, what does that do? What's the benefit of it? Is that in your life, in your day-to-day -day things, when stresses come about, you know what it feels like to be calm. And you can manage stress, stresses and also become more resilient You know when things come into your day that create more stress. The more stress you know, that, that you're managing in your life, the less energy you're gonna have for other things, like training, like lifting, you know, whatever it is that you do to train, the more energy you're spending on daily circumstances, the less energy you're gonna have. So the better that you manage your stress, you know, and if you can go from a place to where you're responding to something, right, and you're in a calmer state when stress comes in, and you, you're thinking to yourself, wow, I can handle this in two ways. And you're actually making a choice of how you respond. You're going to lose yeah. a lot, use a lot less energy than if you're reacting, right? And, or if you're knee-jerk and overreacting to something and you move into a place of drama 
that you now have to clean up for three days and you move to a highly unfocused state because you're managing a drama in your life. Yeah. You know, so this is where um, it also, you know, the, the topic of, of emotional uh, mastery starts to come in and how that can help in terms of your training because the more that you can manage your emotions and the more efficient you are at that, the more energy you're going to have to put into your physical body as well. Yeah, makes sense. So, so coming off of that, um, when you were talking, I, I, I would imagine it's not like a one size fits all for everybody in terms of the frequencies um, and what you're trying to achieve. Like, and I, I'm just thinking as a coach, right? I have, I have one kid in particular I'm thinking of, and if he's listening, I won't say his name, but he, he's going to know I'm talking about him. Um, he gets very anxious before games. And I would ask him kind of like what he's listening to. And it's like hardcore rap or like rock, something like with a really high frequency. And my suggestion to him was kind of like, you got like, you're already up here. That's and right. then to add that music and stuff is only going to make you think, you know, you're adding more stuff. So same like more, more frequency, you're adding, you're adding more to something that's already too high. So I guess my question to you is, it's not a one size fits all. It's kind of like you have to kind of play with it and figure out where you want to be to get, to find your success. Yes, that's correct. And, you know, so a rule of thumb, and we'll get into this a little bit later in the conversation is, you know, if you think of music as a bridge, and this is a great exercise for him. If he asks himself, where am I right now? Right. And so in this case, he, the answer would be anxious. Mm -hmm. Right. So what's the outcome that he wants to be less anxious, but he still wants to be focused. Right. So he might not want to listen to fully relaxing music, you know, because it, it might be too, it might be too big of a variance for him, but he might want to listen to something in between that to kind of bridge him and take him down. You know, so maybe something that he likes to listen to, to, um, you know, to move a little bit, but not as high energy as listening to heavy metal or rap. Right. You know, maybe it's, it's a top 40 song that he loves. And it's all about, as well, preferred music, what he likes, what's going to take him there. So if you can ask yourself, where am I? Where do I want to go? And then start utilizing your music library to do that. You know, so if you take inventory of all the music that you have and say, hmm, what piece of music can really take me to that place? This isn't working, right? The rap and um, heavy metal for this is not working and taking me to the place. What piece would work to do that? And then you start to create playlists that are starting to steer you in the direction of where you want to go. So it's definitely not a one size fits all. And, you know, a lot of great medicine you know, is geared towards individual medicine these days. It's not geared towards one size fits all panaceas. You know, it's learning what moves you into one state or another. And it takes experimentation, just like any new program that you're implementing, right? It takes time and energy to anchor yourself into a program. So, you know, doing that for 30 days and kind of seeing what moves you in different directions is a great place to start for athletes. So, so B, you, you did mention, you know, finding the music that you like, um, that's important, you know, in, in, in athletics and in coaching and training, we talk to kids all the time or any athletes about like, when we talk about nutrition, we talk about, you know, there's times when you're not training and you eat, you eat for, for enjoyment, right? You love the taste of the food, whatever. And the other times when you eat for nutrition and it doesn't really make a difference how that food really tastes it's it's about what's optimal for your body and for your performance is yes. there any is there any similarity in that at all i mean are there are there are there musics that um you know i know some athletes who are high level wrestlers who always are exper experimenting with everything from from workouts to to music and you know whether they really love it or not if it's doing a job if it's producing something positive for them they would they would be okay with that anyway do you know what i mean does that make sense? Like yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a balance, and this is what I call musical nutrition as well, because just like you put food into your body, you know, you can nourish yourself with music as well. Right. You know, but I, but the same thing as well with that is that you might have something that is good for you. 
nutritionally, like you might say broccoli is good for you, right? A doctor and a naturopathic medical doctor, that you might not know it. What's being prescribed to you nutritionally, like broccoli or you know, carbs before workouts, you might be allergic to rice, you know, or you might be allergic to potatoes, or you might be allergic to broccoli, you know, so it's also listening to your body as well and seeing what brings inflammation to the body. You know, I'm talking about foods now as well. So I think it's the same thing with music, you know, that you can, someone could suggest, well, this piece of music would be perfect for you, but I think you still have to listen. Right. You know, so it's at 60 beats per minute. It's using binaural beats. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great for you. But you listen to it and it sounds like scratching fingernails on a blackboard. Yeah. You know, so it's a little bit different because you're utilizing different senses when you're listening to music as opposed to when you're eating. Right. You know, there's different senses that occur that it has to be pleasant. It has to be pleasant for, for it to be beneficial. Right. So, um, I, I think that answers your question. It does. It does. You know, well, and, it's kind of like it's kind of like ahead, your brain and your heart are different. Like I feel like I feel like you, you know when you're eating, there's just it's such a chemical thing that your body's going to take that nutrients and do with it what you will. Whereas your brain has to kind of accept that the frequencies and accept the to be able to like that kind of stuff. Um, otherwise, there's 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 just kind of no point to it. Yeah, I'm and the composition, and that's a great point because so if we distinguish between the different types of intelligence between the brain and the heart, you know, the brain's intelligence is geared towards thinking mm -hmm. and our thought patterns and how we acquire knowledge and wisdom, right? And You, it's, you've learned all the techniques and have access to that in your brain. But the heart tells you in that match, you know, when you're following your instincts, you know, wow, instead of doing this move, you know what, I think I'm gonna try this. And all of a sudden you got the guy on his back. You know, you had choices there, but you went with your instinct or your gut. What told you that it wasn't your brain? Right. That's the difference between your, your brain's intelligence and your heart's intelligence. And we're learning more and more that we have access to both. You know, so similarly, when I was talking about entrainment, which is synchronizing those brain wave frequencies in your brain, we have ways that we can entrain the heart as well, utilizing music and adapting to it. So it's similar to what I was talking about when I talked about my process of um, composing at 60 beats per minute, right, to move my heart to a more relaxed state, your heart has the ability to adapt to tempo in music. You know, so when you're listening to different tempos, you can guide your heart into the state that you want. And so the main states that we're looking at, you know, within athletes are the sympathetic state and the parasympathetic state. And the key with that is, is knowing when to tap into each. So the sympathetic state is geared towards like running from the bear, right? With those intense stressful, you know, when you're in that, in that wrestling match and before that, you probably want to be geared in, into your sympathetic state, a highly, you know, you're in a highly um, survival state is, is not a bad thing to be in during a match, right? But, you know, before, uh, you know, the day before or after the match, you probably want to be in parasympathetic where you're now being able to reset, regenerate, um, reset your digestive system so that now you're, you know, the food you're bringing into your body before a match and how you're nourishing yourself after a match are more easily digested so that that can be converted into energy, right, for your training. So it's really being knowing, same thing, when to use music as a bridge to take you to either of those states. When do you want to be in sympathetic? When do you want to be up, right? When do you want to be slowing down so that you can reset your body? So again, you know, um, and research has shown this, 
you know, that faster music, when you're, uh, when you're in that training process, you know, your heart's going to adapt to that. Your heart rate, you know, is going to adapt to the music and also to your workout. You know, so if you're listening to, that's when he would be listening to that high energy music and that rap, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the music that really gets him up is during the training process, right. you know, to move his, his, his heart into, you know, those, those states where it's moving faster, he's uh, in a, a, a more focused and attentive state. But then when the workout's over, you know, it's targeting that heart to move into repair and the body to move into repair, rejuvenation, uh, and moving to more relaxed music. So targeting the heart at 60 to 80 beats per minute, you know, a lot of the music that I create um, for relaxation is in the categories, like I have a series called Ambiology, that you, know, you could just listen to it for a minute or two and, and your breathing slows down, right? And your heart begins to adapt to those tempos. And this is what we call coherent states. So this is not just um, mental and emotional, but what's going on is your heart's moving to smoother and more orderly patterns. And so if you think of your heart as a metronome in your body, you know, that is sending out the tempo to the rest of your systems, your digestive system, your endocrine system, all of your lymphatic systems. Um, so it's, it's regulating the tempo of your body as opposed to the other way around, if you think about like an orchestra, everybody playing what they wanted at different tempos, right? Those are incoherent states. Mm -hmm. And so you wanna move your body to these coherent states where they can have repair. And it's great to listen to that relaxing music you know, for that more inspirational up-tempo music to move into sympathetic states. And so again, we can target our different states of our heart as well. And also our emotions play a role in that also. So we can move into more coherent heart states and move into these smooth orderly rhythms when we're in what are called, you know, we, you would think of them as positive emotions, right? Like um, being inspired, being in a state of gratitude, right? Being passionate about something as opposed to being angry, anxious, stressed, so when we're in those positive emotional states, you know, research has shown that our EKGs show that we're in these more coherent states where our body can be in that state of repair. And when we're in those incoherent states of anger, frustration, anxiety, we're in these non-coherent states where there's jagged rhythms and we're not repairing. So if a piece of music moves you emotionally as well, where, wow, that piece of music makes me feel up and inspired, you know? And this is where, you know, like listening to, for what, 20 years, 30 years, people have been listening to the theme song of Rocky. You know, why does that still work? Or right? why does it still work to listen to We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions, right? Um, and as well as, you know, back in the day, people listened to Basketball by Curtis Blow. You know, nowadays people have their own songs that they listen to as well, you know, to, to move them to those states where they're feeling inspired. So again, it's where am I now? You know, do I feel like I'm, my heart's beating really fast and I'm anxious? Do I, do I wanna move into a state of where, where I'm inspired or do I wanna move into a state where I'm relaxed and we can, we can target those heart states? And what happens is the more we can be in those smooth orderly rhythms, the more we can access our heart's intelligence, you know, because we're moving into those states where we're not thinking as much and, and we can access our intuition and our gut and actually hear them when they're talking back to us. So uh, a long-winded question, a long-winded answer. So, but, you know, yeah, it gets, it gets so technical. It's, that, that's a point. It, it's, it's very technical, a lot of technical, it actually, you know, sounds kind of scientific, and I'm sure a lot of it is scientific. How do, how would you recommend, especially, we have a lot of younger athletes, you know, who listen to the program. Um, how would you recommend, because they're not, you know, you can't go into a store, I would assume, or go online and say, you know, I want, a, I want something that's 60 beats per minute or something. How would they find something that's going to work for them? I think inspirational, it's kind of easy, right? You put it on, and if it, if it makes yeah. you jump up and your heart starts pumping. It's, it's pretty easy to know I like that music. But to find music 
that does some of the things that you talked about, the relaxing states and, and, and more aware states, how do you, how do you, how would someone find that, you know, if they were looking for it? Yeah. You mean, you know, outside of buying my music and streaming my music? Of course, they can go to, they can go to Barry Goldstein, <laughs> the information. And, yeah. and I actually have, you know, you were talking about um, your embryology um, uh, CD. And yeah. I listen to it all the time. And so, and it does, it does exactly what you say. It comes, it brings me right down, um, you know, to a nice, easy level for meditation and things, I, other things I do. But um yeah, besides, besides buying your music, how can they find music that would achieve some of these things? Yeah, so first I want to apologize for the shameless plug. And no, no, no. Plugs are good. good. But, uh, you know, it, we are having a lot of successes with it, so it's, it's, it's nice to share it now and not think about it that's, that it's just selling. But uh, actually, Gar, um, it's, it's very easy in this day and age. You know, like if you went to Google right now, and you typed in songs at 60 to 80 beats per minute, you know, there are, you'd come up with a lot of different choices. And on YouTube as well. You know, if, you if you go to YouTube and type in binaural beats, isochronic beats, music for training, you know, um, there's a, a lot of things out there for it. And, and again, all music's not created equal, you know, and I think that's where expertise also comes in in how long you've been composing music, how long have you been doing this, what are your success rates, like a trainer, you know, all coaches for sports are not the same. What are their successes? How is it working for them? So I think what it comes down to is, is looking for trusted resources, but also listening to the music. And that's all they have to do is type in 60 to 80 beats per minute, cool. or type in top music uh, used for inspiration and motivation. You know, uh, and that'll be a great starting point for people to to access these different states, you know, of, of their heart being more coherent and their brain being more coherent. That's awesome. That's that's great. That's great advice. Just just to piggyback on, on that question. Um, and I, I'm just I'm just thinking about like my athletes. Um, and the way that they make playlists, and I know that like the discussion over our warm up mix is a big topic. And there's they love they love their music, and yeah. a lot of the stuff they put on this on this is stuff that they like. And oh, this song's awesome, coach! This is fire. We gotta hit. We gotta put this on. And yeah, you know, that my kids We're have fire. That's all I hear from my kids. Oh, fire, fire, drippy, swaggy. We got everything. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think what, what I'm the more I'm hearing you uh, us talk, and maybe not so much what gets played when we're on the field, but more what's going into their playlist in their headphones before we get on the field or before a training session or or whatever. Um, you mentioned that it's an you have to experiment; it's a little trial and error. So I was wondering, maybe a good idea for them would be to kind of like listen to songs they already like, but then have a reflection period of how does this make me feel and almost separate these songs into this one brings me up this one not so much kind of thing absolutely yeah and that's what i was going to get into as well you know and sometimes what's what they love is not necessarily good for them also right. you know so i i could love eating chicken parmesan you know but i, I you don't want to be eating that you know five times a week, you know, if you have to lose weight, right? Or you, if you have to suck weight for wrestling, whatever you're doing. So that's the big question, again, is what's good for me in this moment? What's going to take me there? And, you know, if during trainings and workouts, that stuff that they call fire, it might be perfect for them. You know, but one person's playlist is not going to, you know, they probably argue over what is fire and what's not, you know, so. And, and know, I, 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 I think that, like, like you said, like, it might be a great song that they like. There's a ton of great songs that I like, but after I'm done listening to it, I don't want to go, you know, squat my max weight. It's a good song and I really enjoy listening to it, but maybe it's just not the appropriate song for that situation. But you don't, if you're not thinking about it in that way, you might just be like, oh, this is a great song. I like this. It's one of my favorites. I'm putting it on this playlist because I want to hear it. Yeah, and I think you're, you're, I think Gary, you were you were right in one thing. It's easy. I think it's easier for people to find songs that inspire and motivate them, you know, because it's more associated with that in terms of the inspiration yeah. and the motivation. But for athletes to know when to come down 
right? And when to move into a relaxed state, right? Or how important sleep is in the process of them and them, you know, having the edge. And that's really what we're talking about. It's not just functioning at high levels, it's functioning at the highest capacity that's possible, you know? And that's really where it comes in. So after those workouts, after those matches, you know, are they slowing down? Are they listening to relaxation music at all, right? For people who have a hard time meditating, you know, listening to relaxation music is a great bridge because you can move into meditative states listening to a very relaxed piece of music that you didn't even know what meditation was. You know, you're like, wow, and in those three minutes there, it's almost like I wasn't thinking, yeah, yeah. right? And I, you know, I was, is that what meditation is? You know, so again, introducing new things like relaxation music or, you know, as well, it's um, listening to music before sleep as well, you know, to wind down. Sleep is such an important thing on getting that edge, you know, because we're finding more and more in research for athletes that, you know, sleep gives us the ability to um, also sustain less injury even right? Um, being able to recoup at better rates, have, you know, having more focus, less anxiety. You know, so if you're not getting enough sleep, you're not going to have the edge, you right. know, and right. th that's, you know, so that's something that's not always looked at as well. It's like, why am I not getting great sleep? You know, maybe because I'm anxious about that game tomorrow. And, right? and you know, that, that I would say that that's a, you know, you challenge. So one, one thing, going back to what you said before, um, you know, that it's easier to find inspirational music. And I think that that is kind of works with what you said earlier. Coaching and training has evolved as well. And so, you know, 30 years ago, it was more about, hey, just get fired up. Just, you know, just go forward. Be the toughest guy in the room. Go forward. And there wasn't a science. We weren't thinking about the mental game as much. We weren't thinking about relaxation. We weren't thinking about optimal sleep, um, all the things you're talking about now. So I mean, that's one of the reasons why it is. And to your point about sleep, you know, one of the challenges that we as, as coaches face, and more now than even when I started coaching 20 something years ago, um, kids have a hard time relaxing. There's so much pressure and so much stress on them. So what we do in our, in, in our gym is every Friday we have like a, uh, relaxation, meditation, visualization period. And when Jordan was in high school, if I would do that period, half the team, by laying on their backs and listening to what I was saying, half the team would be asleep. And that was fine because I didn't, I wanted them to relax. Now, and this year, I can't get half the kids to lay on their back. They, they sit up and, you know, just automatically their, their minds are racing. So the importance of this type of music to relax them and to have them get more optimal sleep is important. So yeah, please talk about, you know, things they can do to, to kind of get that sleep. And we talk to kids all the time. You need to have your eight, seven, eight hours of sleep a day, at least. Um, and, and have a hard time getting it. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest challenges is, is in this day and age, there's so much more mental stimulation than yeah. there was 10, 20 years ago, because, we're, you know, and it's not just kids, it's adults as well. Sure. You know, we're, we're on our computers, we're on Facebook, you know, and we're interacting, you know, 16 to 18 hours out of our day. Yep. And then Who's most crazy? people, yeah, most people are just firing and wiring and constant beta. You know, that's the busy mind state that we're talking about. And so we go from being these type A personalities and firing and wiring all day to just thinking we're gonna to go to sleep at night and just lie down, you know? So the, the, one of the biggest things is we don't process our day. And this is where mindfulness also comes in, which is becoming so much more of a thing with athletes, you know, with, with you know, you see it more in, in the apps, calm, right? And- um, Headspace. With, with Headspace, right? They're talking about mindfulness. So mindfulness isn't really, it's, I call it really more like heartfulness because we're in our minds enough. You know, but really processing our day uh, before we go to sleep is part of it, you know, is, okay, well, before I turn on my TV and then just try to go to sleep, you know, what would happen if an hour before sleep, I looked at my day and I said, well, what have my challenges been today? What was my biggest challenge? And you just identify that challenge, right? 
put on a piece of music, a relaxing piece of music, identify your challenges and just breathe through it. Slow your breathing process down, breathe in and out, right? And then also ask yourself, what were my biggest successes during my day? So what you're doing is you're giving your brain a chance to process some of the things that you take into sleep. And so again, 20 or 30 years ago, I probably would have laughed at this. It would have sounded very, what I call woo, right? To go through this process of, wow, what are my biggest challenges? What are my biz right. biggest successes? But you know what? What sounds ridiculous, um, if, it, if it works, right? Then, then it becomes an edge. That's not ridiculous. Yeah, it becomes a secret weapon. Yeah. You know, that other people aren't willing to try. You know, let them laugh at you. But if you're going to process those things in your sleep and all during your sleep, you're going to think about, wow, what happened during your day? I had that argument with that person or I sucked in practice, right? Or, you know, or you haven't acknowledged some of the successes that allow you to feel less anxious uh, during your day then you're going to move that into your sleeping patterns and your brain's going to brainwave patterns are going to be moving too fast. You're going to be in beta and you need to be moving into bridging down into alpha into theta and then into delta. That's how you get the best sleep is bridging down. Yeah. Right. Not just going from beta to delta, right? Cause you might, and then you wake up three hours later with those thoughts that were bothering you. Right. So what's great is music is one of the most non-threatening, safest ways to attain all of these things we're talking about, whether it's inspiration, relaxation, motivation. M music's, music's low cost, non-invasive. We all have it. We all have our playlists. It's just a matter of you know, us really utilizing it as a program. Yeah. So about 60 minutes before you go to sleep at night or your athletes that you're training, just tell them to put on a piece of, of music that's at 60 beats per minute. You know, again, um, you know, my series Ambiology is great for that. There's tons of music online that they can do that with. And you, they don't even have to really listen. So it's not like listening to music that you right. normally do in an active state where you have to have your headphones on, right? And you're listening to lyrics and you're being motivated by them. Just put it on in the background and you'll notice that your body starts to adapt. Right. And in train to those slower rhythms. And before you know it, you're like, wow, I'm really relaxed. My body's calmer. And then, yeah. you know, they can move to to a more conducive state to sleep. And not only that, studies show that they stay asleep longer. So this is not just me saying, you know, this is music that's going to help. These are studies, you know, that I've looked at. I've researched when I, I wrote a whole book on this. It's called the secret language of the heart. And the studies show music 60 to 80 beats per minute, lower frequency. So they have those, the, the bass tones in there that actually younger people love, but you know, they're not bass lines. They're just low, long bass tones in there. And they're moving slower, you know, to slow you down. That's what's going to work to wind you down in what's called your circadian rhythms. That's what moves out of rhythm in your body when you're not sleeping at night. And it takes a long time to move into uh, states of insomnia where now someone actually has a disease, right? That has happened over many years. So like anything else, it's a program you have to introduce and try for 30 to 60 days to change those patterns and to re-entrain and synchronize your circadian rhythms in your body for sleep. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not rock and scientists. You just put it on in the background and you start, you know, you start a program to get that edge and better sleep is part of that. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, I think everything you talked about in that, in that last set, uh, statement there is, is key. And so, you know, we, we talk about, and I, and I use it myself all the time to have a routine. And so, you know, you talked about, um, you know, evaluating your day or, re or reflecting on your day. And, you know, we, I, I, use, I use a journal and I, I keep my journal every day and go through that same process. And then I do a few minutes of meditation and I listen to music and I don't watch TV anymore in bed. I changed that a while ago and my sleep is better. My energy is better. I'm up earlier, you know, and so it's all part of that same thing. And music is kind of the base for a lot of that that I do. Um, and, you know, that's the things we're trying to teach people. So 
I would definitely appreciate that, that message that you're sending to the kids. So, you know, we got a lot of really great information here. Um, and, and I, I think that, you know, the younger people and our athletes are going to really take a lot from this. Um, you know, what's, what's the, I guess the biggest, you know, one piece of advice that you could give, um, to, to the athletes, um, use for using music, um, in, in the best way possible. Um, you know, like one thing that they should always remember to do, and you may have already said it, but if you can kind of rephrase it or reposition it for us, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, I think the most important thing to, to leave with is creating that program. So I'd like to outline that a little bit of what that looks like. And it's what I call becoming the DJ of your life. So a lot of, you know, kids out there are DJing or there's they're creating book, their own playlist. I'm sorry. There's, a, there's your next book title. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, a, it's great because what happens is most of us have had powerful experiences with music, but they're random. So we are basically waiting for that to occur to us, right? Music for me is not something that happens to us. It's something that happens in us as well. So we're engaging music from our brain, from our hearts, and we have music inside of us as well, our heartbeats, our breath. They're all, they're all ways of utilizing music. But really, creating a simple program, which is three times a day, just like you nourish yourself three times a day, is the best way to start a musical program. So in your morning, ask yourself, you know, what piece of music is going to be important for you to start your day with? You know, if you're on an off day and you're not working out, it may be listening to a piece of relaxing music, you know, after the match that you had, you want your body to recuperate. So you might want to start your day with a relaxing piece of music. But if you have, you know, you're going into a, um, a game or you're going into a match that morning, you might want to listen to something very up and motivational. So again, asking yourself where you are in that morning, where do you want to go? Pick a piece of music to start your day. Then in the middle of, you know, your day around lunchtime, it's the same thing that happens, you know, going from breakfast to lunch. You know, you have breakfast, you're energized again, um, but, you know, around 11 or 12, you notice your energy starts to go. You've had some challenges stress-wise at work. You know, what's taking you off target in your day? And what piece of music will take you back, you know, into a more focused, more attentive state or a more relaxed state, depending on where you want to go. So for me, I'm by, you know, my computer a lot during the day. I like to get up and move during lunch and listen to a piece of up piece of music. Um, I like to take what I call a five minute vacation where I listen to music from different parts of the world. So I feel like I'm not in my environment, mm -hmm. you know, anymore. I'm in, you know, I'm in Jamaica or I'm in uh, China, you know, whatever it may be, or I'm listening to music from for African drumming to get up and, and move, whatever it may be for you, listen to a piece of music at lunchtime. And then at, you know, Dinner or after dinner, I think of it as dessert. You know, what do I want to wind down in my day that's going to bridge my day into night? And so these, you know, three most important times of the day become your own musical program to implement. You're not, it's not random anymore. You're steering it, right? You're steering, you know, you're steering your vehicle, yeah. you know, just like you would anything else. And you're mapping it out of where you want to go. And Jordan, you brought this up before, and it's very important, creating specific playlists for specific things. You know, so sp creating a playlist that, you know, is going to just be for motivation and inspiration. Compl creating a playlist for just relaxation. Creating a playlist that bridges the two. Creating a playlist for sleep. You know, this is technology that we didn't have you know, um, 20, 30 years ago, we had to create mixed tapes, yeah. you know, for everything. So it's so easily accessible that these are like, these are power sound tools that everybody has now, yeah. you know, everybody can do it. And, you know, that's the message is everyone can become the DJ of their life. But I think the biggest take home guy is why, you know, why? And it's because most athletes are driven that, what they're doing is for a purpose. You know, they're inspired to participate in their sport. 
they want to go to those highest levels, you know, of achievement, no matter what that is, if it's becoming a pro athlete or just becoming the best that they can be. But again, that comes back to the heart's intelligence and that's where our purpose is. That's where our vision is, right? And you want to utilize music to enhance your vision and your purpose of what you feel you're here to do um, in your life yeah. and, and for, your, for your athletic achievements at this point. That's awesome, man. That's, uh, that's, that's, it, it, it's right on. It's, it's, it's great stuff. I mean, it, it's bigger than just music, but music, using mu music as the, as the vehicle for all this. Um, I think that, you know, being a DJ and, and as you and Jordan talked about, you know, just having, creating those things that will help you in the different situations and get your mind and your heart into the right places you need to be is, is, is a great message. And, um, listen, we appreciate all the, all the information you gave us today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how people can get in touch with you? Um, I, it, it, it could be a shameless plug. Who cares? Um, we want to have a resource for our, for our athletes to go to. So tell us how they can reach you and find your music. Uh, so you can reach me at barrygoldsteinmusic.com. Um, my music's available mostly everywhere now on iTunes, on Amazon, on Spotify, on Apple. So that's easy to find. Um, if you're looking for more information and all of this is like, wow, this is kind of cool. I'd like to learn more about how music, yep. sound, and vibration could be used because we're really just kind of scratching the surface of this. You know, my book is really great for that. It's called The Secret Language of the Heart. And uh, it has over 60 studies that document, you know, how music can be used to, you know, have more optimal health. Um, it's endorsed by doctors. Um, it's in, endorsed by spiritual leaders, you know, if you're more interested in that side as well. And, um, you know, I think the big thing is ask those questions. Become more inquisitive. Nothing should be ridiculous to you. Everything should be a possibility for how you can get the edge. And, um, you know, I appreciate what you guys are doing and giving athletes these tools and being open um, as well. And I think your podcast is just, you know, is, is giving people access to so many more learning tools. So I appreciate what you guys are doing as well. Well, thanks, B. We appreciate having you on, man. And uh, we'll, you know, I, we'll t I'll talk to you soon. I love you. And um, thanks again. Thanks, Pleasure being here, guys. Thanks, Jordan. All right. All right. Have a good one, B. You too.